In this video, we're going to go over how to set up user-based tunneling using Cisco ISE. This is my actual setup. So we have a 3810 with a PC hanging off of interface 17, a 7010 controller, and Cisco ICE. I'm using 2.3 on Cisco ICE, 8.3.1 on the controller, and uh, Aruba OS Switch 16.05 on my 3810. In this video, I'm not going to be going over in depth uh, what user-based tunneling is and what you can do and all the benefits and stuff like that. I'm just going to be showing you how you can set up user-based tunneling using Cisco ICE, and this also works for other third-party AAA servers. Now, seeing that we don't actually have a clear pass, we can't actually use downloadable user roles with user-based tunneling uh, in this particular setup but we can use local user roles and then also still have the tunneling go back to our controller. So I'm going to hop into my switch really quickly and show you the configuration of a local user role. So I have my switch already up. I did just a little show run. And here I've configured a local user role. So AAA authorization user role. I've given it a name of ISE local. And then I have my secondary role which has an admin user, and this secondary role is going to live on my controller. Right? So my device is going to connect, and it's going to get past the ISC local user role, and that's going to pop it into VLAN 101. And then the secondary role, where all my policy is going to live on my controller, uh, is going to be underneath the secondary role of admin user. Now, if I go up here a little bit more, my radius host, that's actually my Cisco ISE on my server address. And then I set the, the time window and all that stuff. So pretty much everything is the same as if you were setting up normal user-based tunneling, right? The only difference is instead of having my roles exist in ClearPass and having it downloaded to the switch, they exist on the switch already, right? And I still have my user roles enabled. And then I also have my radius key and I still have my tunnel node server pointing to my controller, right? It's still mode role based. Now, one of the things you have to do in ICE to allow this is you have to actually add the dictionary. So for whatever reason, uh, the, actually the VSA, excuse me, not the dictionary. For whatever reason, the VSA that allows you to do uh, user roles uh, doesn't come already baked into Cisco ICE. And if you try to re-upload the dictionary, it tells you, hey, we already have this dictionary. Uh, we're just going to override it and it doesn't appear in there. So the best way to have this work is to just add the particular VSA. So I'm going to go over and do that right now. Dictionaries. Drop it down. Go to my radius dictionaries. My vendors. I'm going to go down to HP. Oops, there you go. Let me click the top one really quick. And then I'm going to click Dictionary Attributes. So here I've already added it. It's actually down here. So the HP user role is the actual role we want. And the number is going to be 25. You're going to have it as a string, and you're going to allow it in both directions. Now, in order to add an attribute or VSA, what you do is you click the plus button here. You'd copy the exact name, so the HP underscore user rule. I do HP tag user tag role exactly as I have it spelled. I'd leave it as string, and then I'd put the ID as 25 as I had before. And I'm not going to add it because I already have it in Cisco ISC, but if you don't, this is how you would add it. And this would allow you to actually then create an authorization profile uh, to apply to devices that have authenticated. Okay. I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't want to add it. So that exists right here. So if you need to get there, you're going to go to work centers, dictionaries, and then you're going to navigate to your dictionaries, your vendor dictionaries, HP, and click Add, and then type in the HP user role. 
Once that's done, you now have the ability to use it when you're creating a policy set within ISC, right? So I'm gonna to go to user policy. That's my, my main policy to catch all for all .1x authentication. I'm gonna to go to my authorization policies. And I'm going to create an actual user role, that name that's gonna be applied to my device. Here I already have one created. So I'm gonna use that one, but just so you can see what it looks like, I've gotten it open in this tab here. So what I did is I created a new one. So I gave it a name, I gave it an access type, access accept, so if I've authenticated and I allowed on my network, I'm gonna let this authorization profile apply. And another key thing to have checked is your actual network device profile. So you wanna make sure it's an HP wired device, right? So when you add a device into Cisco ISC, it's gonna get profiled as an HP wired device. And if you have this selected to Cisco or any other vendor that's in here with an ISC, then this user role would never get applied to your device and it wouldn't work, right? So the next thing I'm going to do when I'm creating a particular authorization profile or a user role to get applied is I'm gonna find that HPE user role, right? So I'm gonna go down here. I see all my vendors once again. I'm going to go to HP, scroll down, find that, that attribute that I added to my dictionary. So here you can see it. So I have the HP user role, and it's set to the 25 ID. I'm going to select that, and then this is the actual string, so I can enter in any string. And if we go back to our switch, I actually have it named ISC at local, right? So I'm going to actually call on that in my particular authorization profile. Once that's done, I'm going to click Save. And then I would be able to select it here. So if I wanted to select a new one or an old one, I could pick on that. It would actually get applied to a particular device. Right. And once that's all done, I'm ready to test. So here, I'm going to enable Interface 17. Let me show port. And here you can actually see now that user rule is applied. Now I actually didn't show you what it looks like before, so I'm going to disable it. Oops. And then do a show port access clients before, so you can see, hey, I wasn't already authenticated. Then enable it back, and then shouldn't take too long. Okay, there you go. I've just re-authenticated. So control C out of the repeat. And I can actually go over to ISC and look at my live logs to see the authentication just go through. So I should see user 03 in here. There we go. So we're gonna open up that actual feed and we can see my authorization results, I got the ICE local authorization profile and I got permit access. I can keep scrolling down. I can actually see it pass the ICE local user role to the switch and then it got applied, right? So if I go back to my actual switch, I can see VLAN 101, I'm in that VLAN now. I can actually see my user, my MAC address. And if I scroll up a little bit, I can see my local user will have the VLAN ID of 101. So now I've placed in that VLAN. And I'm getting tunneled back to my actual controller. I can run a couple of commands to verify that I'm actually tunneled to my controller. So I can do show. Tunnel all the users. And 
here I can actually see one tunnel 13, the IP address, the VLAN has been dropped in, and the key. I can also see the MAC address of the user, which matches here. I can also do uh, nodes. And this will actually tell me the two devices that are, or two switches actually, that are being tunneled back to my controller. So I have two switches that are set up uh, to do tunneling, and I have one, two, and this is going to tell me all my devices that are going to be tunneling users back to actual controller. So this is how to actually set up user-based tunneling using a third-party AAA server.